Hey, what's up folks? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And in this video, we'll be doing a three-way CPU comparison between the two new Skylake processors, including the Core i5-6600K, the Core i7-6700K, and probably one of the best six cores you can get for the money, the Core i7-5820K based on the Haswell E architecture. Now, what we're going to do is take a look at all these uh, three processors, put them through the ringer in terms of specific CPU-dependent benchmarks, as well as do a couple of different games. Uh, gaming benchmarks so that way you have a good kind of knowledge basis on getting the right CPU that matches your budgets and your needs so without any further ado let's get right into this Now here you can see a breakdown of the specification and features of each of these three processors. Uh, you can see that the Skylake processors are both quad core. The only main difference is the frequency and the fact that the Core i7s have hyper threading enabled so they have eight threads versus the 6600K has no hyper threading just like all the other Core i5s we encountered in the past. Now the 5820K has been around for almost a year now. It's actually one of the most economical six cores you can get from Intel. It's based on the Haswell E platform using socket 2011 it's 22 nanometers in terms of the die size versus the skylake processors are based around a smaller 14 nanometer architecture now keep in mind that all three of these uh, cpus are designed for overclocking so we've done that uh, we've overclocked the 5820k to about 4 gigahertz 4.7 gigahertz uh, was the frequency that we overclocked our 6700k and the 6600k i managed to overclock to about 4.6 we can certainly go uh, higher in terms of overall frequencies but uh, I find this to be stable based on the cooling platform that I'm using uh, primarily with the Corsair all-in-one liquid cooling solutions. Now another thing I should mention is that we do have different levels of cache on each of these processors. We have 15 megabytes of level 3 cache on our 5820K, uh, 8 megabytes on our 6700K and about 6 megabytes on our 6600K. Furthermore the new Skylake processors also have a built-in integrated HD graphics and uh, that's great for anybody that doesn't want to deal with any kind of gaming or doesn't want to use a graphics card uh, for whatever reason wants to plug directly from the motherboard to a monitor you have that capability on the Skylake versus uh, the Haswell E platform you need a discrete graphics card for your video now I would bet 99% of people interested in these CPUs are going to be doing some gaming so they're going to get a discrete graphics card no matter what but again uh, you do have that option of not to use a graphics card on the Skylake processors now now, lastly, when it comes to price, the 5820K hovers around the $400 USD mark versus you're looking about $350 for the 6700K and about uh, $250 uh, for the uh, 6600K. Again, pricing fluctuates depending upon where you are in the world and what time you're watching this video. But uh, generally speaking, this is going to be fairly representative for a long period of time. Now, in terms of our benchmarking rank for the uh, 5820K, we're using our X99 SLI Plus from MSI motherboard platform. Both rigs are going to be using 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory uh, from Corsair, clocked around 2800 megahertz. They can go uh, quite a lot higher, but we're going to stick to around 2800 megahertz. For our Skylake processors, we're going to be using the Asus uh, Z170 Deluxe motherboard, and again with the same RAM configuration. If you want more detailed information about both of these two rigs, you definitely want to check out the description where you find the breakdown and parts list of everything we're using for the benchmarking. Now the first thing that we're going to take a look at is the peak power consumption levels uh, during a prolonged gaming session on each of these uh, three gaming rigs. So here we played Far Cry 4 for about half an hour and just measured the peak power consumption at uh, all three of these processors. Uh, this is the entire system uh, by the way so how much power it's drawing straight out of the wall socket. So you're looking about 395 peak power consumption on the 5820K, about 382 watts on the uh, 6 6700K and about 360 watts on the 6600K. So not a massive difference across these CPUs. Uh, the biggest power draw is definitely going to be our graphics card, which we're using the GTX 980 Ti from Gigabyte. Now moving on, let's talk about the attempts of all three of these CPUs, both on idle and on load. Now keep in mind the idle uh, attempts right over here are based on our overclock. Uh, so they're going to run a little bit cooler if you run them at stock frequencies, but they're pretty safe at the uh, level of overclock that we've achieved. Now when uh, 
at 100% load using Prime 95 for about 15 minutes. Our uh, 5820K hit about 76 degrees C versus 74 degrees C on our 6700K and about uh, 72 degrees C's on our 6600K. So you can see uh, that generally speaking, the six core got uh, the, the hottest out of the other two. And I think the 6700K is at a safe level and we probably have a little bit more headroom for overclocking on our 6600K. So if you definitely want to overclock, looks like that Core i5 could be a real winner here. Now finally, let's get in some performance differences between these three processors. And to do that, we're going to first take a look at my results for Cinebench R15. This is a multi-threaded application. And uh, here you can see the results over here, pretty representative where the 5820K got a very impressive uh, 1195 points versus about uh, 1026 points on our 6700K and about 780 points on our 6600K. So definitely in multi-threaded applications, you're going to want as many cores and as many threads as you can afford. And this is where uh, the something like a six core processing with hyper threading is going to really shine. And the same thing goes for our Geekbench 3 results. We're using the 64 bit uh, benchmark over here where our multi core score is definitely at the highest point on the 5820K. But surprisingly, looks like the 6700K is actually the strongest when it comes to single threaded performance scoring an impressive 5067 points. Our 6600 600K is not too far behind at 4833 and uh, looks like the 5820K in terms of the single core performance is definitely not as good as the other two scoring just around 3800 points. Now moving forward to talk about some of the gaming performance aspects of uh, these uh, three CPUs. Uh, you're going to take a look at some of the results uh, on screen right now. Uh, the results as you can see are fairly negligible. In a lot of cases the 6700K and the 6600K is definitely going to match and and sometimes even beat anything that the 5820K can deliver when it comes to gaming. Uh, even at the high 4K resolutions, there's really not a big difference between most of the titles that I tested out. And uh, generally speaking, if you want a processor specifically for gaming and you don't care about really anything else in terms of multi-threaded capabilities, looks like the 6600K, just like previous Core i5 unlock processors, is definitely going to give you the best bang for your dollar when it comes to the gaming performance. And uh, when you take a look at our 3D Fire Strike Extreme Test, again, the results uh, are fairly uh, explanatory over here. The only real difference is uh, the physics results, where some of the benefits of having more th cores and more threads becomes a little bit more apparent on the 5820K. You can see that it's getting a higher score than the other two. But again, that's uh, specifically when it comes to physics, when it comes to the general score and the graphical performance. All three of these chips are kind of in the same ballpark when it comes to the overall gaming performance but really other than that uh, that's really it if you have any specific questions uh, definitely let me know in the comment section down below check out the description for everything we talked about in this video so where you can get a more detailed breakdown of the benchmarking rig that we use as well as the specific details about each processor additionally we're going to have specific build guides for uh, building a rig with the 6700k as well as the 6600k and a couple of months ago i created a 5820k build guide video so if you haven't seen those I definitely check those out you can click on the screen to go to those specific uh, build guides right now so but really other than that guys that's really it thank you again for watching and we'll see you later take care